Hey everyone, it's Phil Wade. How are you tonight? We're just getting ready to uh, talk about the two contracts in Florida. Uh, if you could type in and say hello, let me know who's here. That would be great. Hey Lily, how are you? Thank you for being here. Uh, just let me know if you can hear me okay, see me okay. We'll get started in uh, in just a minute. Hey Kelly, how are you? Michelle. Hey Patricia. All right, glad you can hear me. We'll give it another. Uh, 30 seconds or so. Hey, Sherry, how are you? Hey, Corinna, good to see you. Um, so, uh, all right. Thank you guys for all being here. Anna, good to see you. Uh, Bill is having some trouble. Try refreshing. Hey, Jeannie. Oh, perfect. Yep. Bill, refresh your browser. Um, that usually does it. All right, we will uh, we will flip the slide now and get uh, get cooking. This won't be a long one. Uh, there's not a lot of differences between the two, but we'll kind of highlight uh, you know what they are. So, um, um, all right. So again, we're going to talk about the differences between the Yaz's contract and then the residential contract for sale and purchase. Um, the, uh, the first difference is, is the title, the headings. Um, I once had an agent thought they were, you know, submitting, this was when she was functioning, um, you know, as the buyer's agent, um, she sent in the, uh, the, uh, the residential contract for purchase and sale. And she thought it was the as is because they look very, very similar. So you just want to, you know, check, check that heading, right? So right at the top on page one, you'll see which one you're using. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But I, I did see one time someone, you know, make an error with that. So be careful on that. Um, all right. So next is um, the inspection period. This is really um, probably the biggest difference between um the two contracts. So with the as is contract, so again, most times um, uh, the as is contract is used, but sometimes the listing agent will require it to be on the residential contract for sale and purchase. That'll be in the realtor remarks and, and they want, you know, that contract to be submitted. So you as the agent, um, you know, kind of need to know the differences, right? So that's why we're doing this training. So you'll have a heads up as to what makes them different. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about um, the inspection period as it relates to the as is contract. So um, it's a free, um, free look for the buyer, right? The buyer uh, can cancel for any reason. Um, we have another person not able to hear. Hopefully she's refreshing her browser. Um, that usually will do it. Um, so, um, so only the buyer can cancel, right? So the seller is not allowed to cancel, but the seller also is not allowed is not um, obligated to do anything. There you go. Thank you, Marga. Glad that worked for you. Uh, so the seller. Um, doesn't have to fix anything, doesn't have to do anything. They may have a better offer sort of behind yours. So they're actually looking to get rid of your client, so to speak. They don't actually have to do any repairs, right? So that's, that's, um, hey, Robin, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you for being here. We're just getting going. So we're just talking about, you know, the differences between the as is contract and the um, uh, sometimes it's called the far bar contract. I call it the residential contract for sale and purchase. I did just mention that uh, the titles are different. So always look page one, the title right in big bold letters up top. It'll tell you which contract you're using. So um, again, the as is contract is used in the vast, vast majority of transactions probably in excess of 95%, but every once in a while, uh, that listing agent will require the um, the residential uh, contract for sale and purchase to be used. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about why you might do that, why you might want that contract used. So with the as is contract, free look for the buyer, only the buyer can cancel. Um, the buyer can ask for things, uh, but the seller is not um, under any obligation to do anything, to give any credits, to lower the price. They can, but they don't, they don't have to. 
All right, so let's talk about um, the residential contract for sale and purchase. So up front, right, as part of the contract, the seller is agreeing up front to fix certain items in advance. That can be a dollar amount. That can be a percentage of, um, of, the, of the contract value. And the three, the three items are general repairs. So general repairs are anything that that buyer finds uh, that they want fixed. Um, uh, the seller has already agreed to fix them. Um, uh, WDO, wood destroying organisms, termites. Right, the if termites are found, the seller is agreeing to upfront to commit to spending so much. Typically, you know, if the default in the contract is one and a half percent, so if if the property is under agreement for three hundred thousand, the seller upfront is agreeing to fix forty five hundred dollars in repairs to have the house treated for forty five hundred dollars for termites and. If there are any permits that haven't been closed out, the seller is agreeing to get them closed out and pay up to $4,500. So one of the things, and that all sounds great, right? I mean, you know, um, but one of the things that makes it um, cumbersome or tricky is, is the following, which is the third bullet here. So if, obviously the, the buyer is going to do that home inspection, right? And then the seller is going to get that home inspection report and the buyer is going to be asking for things, you know, either general repairs, uh, WDO, termites, or to close out permits. And then if the seller doesn't agree, right, they say, oh, that home inspector didn't do a good job. That isn't broken or that doesn't need to be fixed. Then they can have um, their own home inspection. And then based on what comes back from that, then the buyer can either accept that or not. Then if the buyer doesn't accept it, it goes to a third kind of binding home inspector. See how it can get very sort of cumbersome? That's really probably why it isn't used so much, right? So you could potentially have three home inspections with um, you know, the regular far bar contract. Any questions before we kind of move on to the next slide? All right, let's move on. All right, the, um, the second difference has to do with um, um, the as-is contract maintenance requirements. So with the as-is contract, if, for instance, between the time of the home inspection and closing, the air conditioner broke, the seller is obligated to fix that, right? Anything that doesn't work that, um, is, is, um, that worked at the time of the home inspection needs to be fixed, Right. So remember that that so again, most times we're using the as is contract. If something isn't working at the final walkthrough, the seller is obligated either to fix it or to put in money into escrow to get it fixed. Uh, that is not the same with um, uh, the far bar contract. So that's that's the, um, you know, a fairly significant difference. Any questions on that? Permits. Let's talk a little bit about permits, right? So under the FAR bar, I believe they split that. That's a great question, Corinna. I, I will double check that, but I believe they split that. So under that third inspection, I believe they, they split that uh, because really they haven't come to agreement. But I'll double check that. Um, and then permits. So permits under the as-is contract, the seller can close out the permits, but they're under no obligation to do so. They're under no obligation to spend any money, right? Um, under the FAR bar contract, um, that amount of money related to permits is already sort of pre 
established, right? So again, we'll use that $300,000 home, one and a half percent, $4,500. So if there are, you know, open permits, the seller has to close them out. The seller has to spend up to $4,500 to close them. Now, if it costs more um, than the $4,500, then certainly the seller can walk away at that point if they don't want to, you know, spend that additional money. So that's, that's the third thing. So it's, it's the inspection, um, the kind of as is maintenance requirement, meaning that everything is working um, um, uh, between the time of the home inspection and uh, closing, um, and then the permits. So those are the major differences in terms of kind of mechanically um, uh, how the two contracts work. All right, let's talk about when you might, so you're the listing agent, when you might require buyer to use the regular contract, right? Um, you know that house, you know, is in perfect condition. You know there are no termites. You know there are no, um, um, you know, again, to the best of your knowledge, you know there are no open permits. Maybe you had a home inspection, you know, done. Maybe that was something you offered, you know, the seller to get the listing. Oh, I'll do a home inspection. I'll, I'll pay for that. I'll have my home inspector come in. Maybe you give that home inspector a lot of business. He'll do it for $250. He'll check that house out. He'll check the permits. Uh, maybe he brings in his termite guy, right? So you know already because you kind of did that advanced work that there is really nothing wrong with that house. They're going to find nothing if, if, and, or very, very little. It's not going to cost your, your seller much at all, right? But what it prevents, it then prevents the buyer from walking away, right? Sometimes I'll have an agent call me and tell me, gee, um, I'm out with a client and they want to put in two offers on two different houses. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. Because on one of them, they can walk away, right? They don't need a reason. They don't even need to do a home inspection. They can walk away, the buyer, with the as-is contract for any reason whatsoever. Maybe it's, you know, a couple, right? And, and maybe, you know, the husband um, really loves the house and the wife not so much. And they, and you know, the wife always wins, right? And um, they decide not to buy the house under the regular contract. That's not possible. So, as the listing agent, sometimes you know, and 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 you know, it can be advantageous to you to use the regular contract. That's really the big difference: is that you're locking in that buyer, right? And you already know that they're finding nothing. Right. So therefore, you don't have to worry about, gee, they're going to walk. I'm going to put this under agreement. They're going to get that 1515 day home inspection. Maybe they're going to start negotiating, start grinding, you know, my client. And I'm, um, you know, I don't want to have that. And then maybe they're going to walk away on me here with this contract. You've locked them in. Right. They can't. I mean, they can obviously get out by not performing, but then you get to keep their deposit. You know, you could possibly sue them. But, you know, barring that, um, they have to buy the property. And you already know, right, because you kind of did that work up front, that that property is in um, very good condition. When, when might you, as the buyer's agent, Right. I've seen this not a lot, but this is a really, really smart buyer's agent. And if they can get this contract accepted, more power to them. Why? So if you actually look on the residential contract for sale and purchase and you go to the addendums under addendum um, L, it says right to inspect cancel. What does that actually mean? Well, what it means is this. I mean, you're I mean, I've seen this only really just very, very few times. And, and, and I take my hat off to, you know, a buyer's agent who was able to pull this off. So think about what you're doing here, right? You're, you're submitting the kind, like there's no, um, um, you know, there's nothing in the realtor remarks that tells you what type of contract as the buyer's agent needs to be, you know, submitted. So you submit, you know, the far bar residential contract for sale and purchase. Um, therefore, then because, you know, and again, we'll use that $300,000 example. 
if stuff is found, right, the seller has already agreed to buy to fix it up to, in that case, $4,500. However, you snuck in addendum 11, which gives the buyer the right to inspect and cancel. So if they find something they really don't like, or, you know, they can still get out. They've almost turned it into the as is contract by putting that addendum in. Um, but they still have, you know, the seller up front telling them they're going to fix certain things. Those three things, again, general repairs, termites, permits. That's it. That's the training. I mean, it's a short one. Um, and those are really the three things. So there's not a lot of differences, but there are some very subtle differences, you know, between the two contracts. And, and it really has primarily to do with, um, you know, the inspection. Uh, any questions before we uh, we call it a night? Uh, Marga, there there is no um, um, there is no best contract. I can only tell you that um, in ninety eight percent of the occasions, the as is contract is used. It's probably used that that percentage of times because of the three inspections, the buyer and seller not agreeing. This way, there's one inspection. They either agree afterwards if things are going to get fixed or not. They move forward or not, right? Under this contract, the potential for sort of like conflict, advanced negotiation where the buyer and seller don't agree on the inspection and they've gone now to a third inspection, it gets clumsy. So that's why that one probably isn't used um, as much. But again, like in terms of, so there is no best, right? There's, okay, in, in what situation, and I mentioned what situation where maybe as a listing agent, you would want your the buyer to use uh, the residential contract. And that's when you know that house is in like perfect condition. And what you're doing there is you're preventing the buyer from walking away on you, right? They, they've already, they can't, that they're obligated. And the seller's obligated, you know, to do so much in repairs, but because you're a top-notch listing agent, you know um, there are going to be no repairs. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. Any last questions before we, uh, you know, I um, the the buyer pays for this first one, Robin. The seller pays for the. Um, for the second one, and I believe I'm going to double check this. They split the cost of the third one. Hopefully, you don't get to a third one. I mean, hopefully, again, you've used it because you know there's really nothing that that buyer is going to find. You know, that house is really in tip top shape. You are, I mean, again, um, you've probably already had a home inspection done as kind of part of your pre, pre listing routine. All right. Any more questions before we call it an evening? Again, it's, it's, um, um, you know, not a lot of differences. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Anna. Hope you guys are all a little more knowledgeable about the two different contracts. Hey, Aisha, how you doing? Thank you for being here. Good chatting with you earlier today. Hopefully we all picked up a few tips tonight. Thank you, Lily. Appreciate you being here. Jeannie. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Robin, Courtney, Marga. Awesome. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Everyone have a good evening. Good night.